we are back and it's time to answer the question, is it safe to use glycolic acid during the summertime mm -hmm. when you're getting way more sun? Mm -hmm. And only, you know, there is a case that you want to continue using it, not just for the fact that it is a chemical exfoliant, but it's actually been tied to long-term benefits like tackling hyperpigmentation, uh, fighting wrinkles, and even has been linked to potential collagen production. So in this sense, you don't necessarily want to lose out on those aspects, but you've always heard that you need sunscreen with AHAs. Right. Um, to be fair, there it, it's true. Because of AHA's nature, its mechanism, it's going to cause a thinning in the SC that is protecting your overall skin layers. Mm -hmm. And because of this, it does um, result in photosensitivity, which increases your, uh, the photo damage that you can accumulate from being out in the sun. Um, we're going to go through some of the data so you get a sense of what that looks like mm -hmm. but then um, bear with us because we're gonna go through all of it and talk about ultimately weighing the risks mm -hmm. is it worth using it so yeah so first off this thankfully there's actually studies that look into this a lot actually it's gonna sound pretty repetitive because people have done quite a few of these right and in this first study we wanted to share it was done in 2001 in this study they did a pre-treatment with 10 percent glycolic acid at a ph of 3.5 mm -hmm. know that this is a pretty common home use um home use product level mm -hmm. they did it once daily six days a week for four weeks and what happened there is it increased the number of sunburn cells formation it led to an increase of sunburn cell formation and cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers. It's kind of a marker for sun damage, uh, as well as a lowering of minimal erythema dose. So MED really quickly is basically how the minimal amount of UV energy it takes to burn your skin. As you can imagine, it is different for people and it's usually tied with the amount of melanin your skin has. So it's tied with your skin tone. More um, people who are more fair has lower MED. And of course, if your skin has a natural baseline and that gets lower people tie that kind of change with increased sun sensitivity yeah and i should also mention for the cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers these are actually indicators of mutations mm -hmm. um, in cells so ultimately they're using this to link it to potential skin, skin cancer, cancer development. potential and so the other thing that this is the, actually the og study this um study was actually done at Brook brookhaven lab a very famous lab in mm -hmm. Uh, collaboration with the FDA. And this is the data that they constantly reference and is why they require all brands to label correctly that you do need to apply sunscreen while using AHA products. Um, the other thing that's really important to note here is that they actually looked at what happens to skin after you discontinue use. And I think the takeaway to remember is that this is actually a reversal, that photosensitivity that does occur, it can be reversed, and they found that within a week after discontinued treatment, um, skin returned back to normal in terms of UV sensitivity. So one thing to keep in mind is that don't feel like this is permanently, this is a permanent situation, your skin is constantly, you know, going to be photosensitized. Um, that is not the case with It's AHAs. actually a pretty quick reversal since it was used at a pretty rigorous schedule for four whole weeks, but only takes one week for skin to dial back. Yeah, exactly. We're going to let's do a couple others, but it's just to kind of bring that message home. Um, so another lab actually looked at a um, treated skin with 10% uh, glycolic acid as well at a pH of 3.5. They did it at for five days um, for 3.5 weeks. So yearly specific. <laughs> yeah, lower frequency, but also at 3.5 weeks. I think they wanted to see like just how little glycolic acid maybe you can get before you get photosensitivity could be the aspect here. Um, but the other interesting thing is they actually compared it to 2% salicylic acid use. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that they noticed that while Glycolic acid did have that same UV sensitivity. They found that salicylic acid did not. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they tie it to is the fact that salicylic acid at 2% might not have exfoliated skin to that same level. Remember right. how Gloria had mentioned about the size of the molecule and its ability to penetrate skin, um, basically reach deeper layers of the skin. Um, so in that aspect, that's one theory they had. The other aspect is sal acid is actually known to have kind of a soothing component or soothing mm -hmm. benefit to it. And that could also lend to why it did not have that same reaction. But all this to say, that does not mean you should not use sunscreen while using sal acid. It's right. mainly, mainly to give a comparison and w between uh, salicylic acid and glycolic, how these can behave. It's kind of a nice comparison to have. 